we have so much information about the patient because the patient, she is the patient, was Iris Murdoch. Is a famous, you know, is famous philosopher and writer. Um, her husband was a writer too. Uh, he was a professor in, in, in Cambridge too. Uh, she took many many notes, and she was he was able to write about the story. She wrote three three books uh, uh, about uh, Iris in the last uh, days and last um, years, <coughs> and she explained how the mourning process after uh, Harry's uh, death. So we have many uh, and details. And a movie. It's a movie, yes. Yeah. Yes, but the movie is not so interesting because uh, not so interesting. It's more interesting the books the because book. yeah. uh, he was really a, a good writer. Instead of telling plainly the story, um, he uh, was a very uh, expert how to uh, inform us, not directly, the chains of Iris. Instead of telling us that she was losing uh, vocabulary, uh, he praised how good uh, Iris was uh, uh, talking and writing before. So it's back and forth the story, and it's uh, really exciting to read. It's not only a, a report of the illness. Uh, so we have this uh, unusual information um, we can use for teaching and for discuss some, some cases. Um, I would do that in my, in my classroom. I can use um, with my students the real case I know from the uh, Alzheimer's Center of Salamanca. Mm -hmm. um, the last novel of Iris Marek was used uh, when, when she died. A uh, doctor said, a physician said that we can use this last novel to study the evolution of the, of the illness. Um, it is true, uh, I had to read that two, uh, twice or three times because uh, the story is very complicated. It had nothing to do, the end of the story had nothing to do with the beginning of the, of the book. And there are many characters and there are characters that are only in the first part of the book and then there are new characters, so uh, a bit complicated. Um, when uh, the novel was published, uh, people said that was an experiment, a literary experiment. Uh, uh, to tell the truth, no experiment, just the evolution of the patient with the language. And this is the, uh, from the last uh, chapters of the books, and the language is really poor, comparing from the uh, first chapters. Here's the last novel. Uh, she published around 29 novels and many essays and many philosophical books, and this is very uh, peculiar, this last novel, Jackson Dilemma. It's a, a moral dilemma, too. So um, I think this case, or cases similar, could answer uh, the question why we had to use sometimes narrative bioethics. Um, because um, we have not enough uh, data to uh, consider what is happening with, for instance, informed concern in these patients uh, living wills, or what means best interest of the, <coughs> those patients or the situation of caregivers. So there are many questions to discuss concerning Alzheimer's disease, but we don't have uh, enough evidence to do that. So uh, for uh, considering the uh, dilemmas on, uh, for deliberate for that, we need, obviously, we need real cases. But sometimes we can use real cases. Can, can I ask a, just a clarifying question? What do you see as the difference between narr a narrative and evidence? Because it strikes me that a narrative is a wonderful kind of evidence, but, but what, what is the distinction? Yes, that well, you good point. Um, in this uh, story, uh, there is a, a real story, uh, the husband, explain us the evolution of the illness, but there are uh, the writing that uh, gives some forms to the story. And it's uh, very useful for us because if you read a, a report of the, of the illness, you can really uh, understand, and um, probably um, you can forget the story because it's too sad and too poignant to, to read. 
if you use uh, a form, narrative form, you are able to follow this story without problem because the uh, communication is easier. So sometimes you, you need to know how to write, not only to tell a real story. And it's just the case. For instance, there are only few cases of stories at the first hand. Um, there is this story, probably you know this uh, Richard, um, I don't remember the, the name now. It's an American, American um, patient. I had a website. Um, he had um, many, many um, uh, I don't, papers and interviewed and he, he tried to, to explain that the uh, perspective of the patient is completely different from the perspective of the physician or the caregivers in case of Alzheimer's disease. Um, so it, it tried to show that we need this special information from the first, uh, 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 at the first hand. Um, I know only uh, three cases is uh, the case of Diana Fryer, an American patient too, but they stop, usually this story stop uh, suddenly because <laughs> the illness had a special <laughs> dynamic and they are not able to, to write, are not able to communicate. Mm? So uh, the, the last uh, part of the illness, we, we have few, only few information, few data about that. Uh, but if, in case you are able to get the, the information from the clinic or from the family, you can read uh, easily this kind of information. So uh, this is the difference, narrative, the writing is important in these cases, yeah. and for the students, obviously. So, this is my point. Um, the other argument is, if you have, in case you have information, because you are part of the ethics committee, my, my case, for instance, that you can use the information, because uh, patient rights are protected. And it's very clear in the Oviedo Convention the situation of people that are not able to consent, and the Spanish uh, regulation is very clear too. Uh, these data are protected. You are you know, uh, allowed to get the information if you are part of the family, part of the clinic, or part of uh, whatever is allowed to, to get the case. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that that, that protection of information keeps information from coming to the Ethics Committee? No, the Ethics Committee could get the information, but you are not if part of the... You can't use it for your students. <coughs> no. Yeah. Or to discuss in a workshop in Madrid. You can get this information. Not clear. I mean, sorry, I just had a doubt. Even if you are not saying the name, you can, you can use like a model. You can uh, say like uh, you are Mario... Uh, this kind of of, de of data that are identifying the, the patient, but you can use it uh, telling just the story with initial or with a false yeah. name. Yes, uh, of course, but you get, uh, can present only the general situation of the patient. Yeah. For instance, this fighting, as uh, Mr. Bailey said, this daily fight fighting with the patient to. Um, uh, uh, eating or clothing, etc. You can get that uh, kind of information. Oh, how guilty Mr. Uh, Bailey uh, feel um, when he screamed to uh, Iris. You can get this kind of information. Or how they solve the, the conflict uh, without language. So the nuances uh, are outside these uh, standard cases. And uh, you can get this uh, second uh, second-hand uh, perspective or first-hand perspective, you can get that. Mm? Uh, perhaps in, in other illnesses it's not so dramatic, the difference, because uh, patients are able to communicate, but in these cases uh, they, they are not able to tell what they really feel, what mm -hmm. they really um, experience.